Welcome to Veris Vignettes. This is Lee Veris, your host for this uh, Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to look at using noise and creating texture. And we're going to be working with this image here. There are a lot of reasons why we might want to add noise, but the classic uh, use of noise is to simulate film grain. And um, we can add a sort of film grain to this image by using uh, noise. Now, there's, there's a special way that we have to add noise to this image. So what I'm going to do first is to create an overlay layer to contain the noise. So what we're going to do, let me close the info panel here, and uh, I'm going to add a new layer. So I'll click on the new layer uh, icon here at the bottom of the layers panel, but I want to hold down the option or alt key when I do that. So when I click on the new layer, while holding down the Option or Alt key, I will get the New Layer Options. This is going to be my Noise Layer. And I want to change the mode here from Normal to Overlay. And now as soon as I do that, you'll notice that we now have this checkbox here that becomes available called Fill with Overlay Neutral Color, 50% Gray. So I'll check that. And when I click OK, I will get a gray layer. And you'll notice in overlay mode, this gray layer does absolutely nothing. Of course, if we were in normal mode, it would cover up the image. But in overlay mode, 50% gray has no effect on the underlying image. Where it deviates from 50% gray, it will have a corresponding effect. So if it's lighter than 50% gray, it will make the underlying image lighter. And if it's darker than 50% gray, it will make the underlying image darker. So what happens is when we add noise to this layer, we can create a grain pattern that gets applied over the image. So let's do that. We'll go to the filter, noise, add noise. And now we can add a certain amount of noise and you can see that it gets applied over the image. Let's, I think we probably only need about 20% here to get the effect that I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to use Gaussian monochromatic because I want to simulate a kind of film grain look. And you know, maybe we'll just use maybe 15%. So I'm looking for enough grain to make it convincing that it's actually maybe a shot from some film. Uh, but on screen, I want it to look a little bit more than I would care to add. So at 50% uh, view, I want to add just a little bit more than, than what I think looks good. Now. You can see that this adds a sort of grainy texture all over everything. And we, it, since it's in a layer, we can, of course, reduce the opacity. Um, or we can change from overlay to soft light to get a softer looking noise. Um, the one thing that is perhaps a little artificial looking is that this noise is a little too sharp. Film grain is a bit softer, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add a little bit of blur. So I'll do Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I just want to add just a little bit of blur, just enough to take the sort of edge off of the of the grain structure. Uh, and I think, you know, maybe about 0.5 will do it. I'll uncheck the preview and you can kind of see the sharp grain versus just a little bit softer. Maybe we'll go about like that. And 
And then we can further refine this again by just changing the opacity a little bit. Now what's interesting about overlay in a gray layer, the overlay noise effect that we've got here, is that this pretty much uh, simulates what film grain looks like. If we had applied the noise to the image directly, what we would end up with is something that looks kind of like the hard light application where the noise gets applied equally everywhere in the image and it's a bit it's a bit overpowering you can see how in the shadows here it's the same level of noise is applied and as it is in the highlights when we use overlay it sort of ramps off and it's not applied very strongly in the darkest or the high, uh, lightest areas of the image is mostly applied in the mid-tones, which is exactly what happens with film grain. So this is a pretty convincing application of film grain. And again, we can reduce the opacity. Uh, if you find a noise level that you like and that you think looks like, say, Triax film or whatever you, you want, now is a good time to actually capture that noise so that you can save it for the future. And this is the way we're going to do that. So I'll go... I, I'm in this layer. Let's let's change it. We don't have to do this, but just to show you what the noise looks like, I'm going to go to normal here. And you can see the noise. Okay. So this is the the noise applied over the whole image. And what we're going to do now is select everything. So I do a command or control A for all, select all. And now under the edit menu, we have here define pattern. So if I select define pattern, I can save this noise and I will call it, uh, oh, you know, let's just call it film grain or something. Now the beauty of this, and I'll drop the selection, now that I've defined that pattern, I can recall this pattern and use it again. So here I'm going to throw away this noise layer. I'm just going to drag it to the trash here. Now I want to use this noise again. So I'm, I'm going to go to 50%. Again, this is the, the, the view that is going to allow me to kind of preview the effect of the noise that I want. Uh, rather than going into to 100%, I'm going to use 50% view. So you see down here, 50%. And now, instead of doing that whole business with creating an overlay layer, since I've saved that noise as a pattern, I can create this new fill or adjustment layer, and we're going to use pattern. So I'm creating a pattern layer and I get to select the pattern and uh, I'll select that film grain that I just made. Now I simply have to change the mode from normal to overlay. The beauty of having this pattern uh, instead of recreating it from scratch, besides making it much faster and easier, I can change the scale of this noise. So if I double click on that pattern uh, icon, the thumbnail here, I get the pattern fill and now I can change the scale. Now watch what happens. So if I go to 50% or so, it makes it smaller and finer and I can also scale it up, make it coarser. So with other, you know, we can pick a different scale pattern and it will create a different effect just by changing the scale. Pretty cool. So you can create a whole library of different uh, grain effects to apply to your images. Let's create another one. If we can do simple grain, we can also apply a texture to the image. So let's, uh, let's create a new overlay layer. I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key and click on the new layer icon here at the bottom of the layers panel. And we'll change the mode again from normal to overlay. Click fill with overlay neutral color. 
50% gray, and we'll call this texture because we're going to do something a little different. Now I'm going to run a different kind of filter. Let's run a clouds filter. So I do filter render clouds. Let's change this overlay to normal so you can see what happened here. So clouds creates this sort of cloudy, random, sort of blotchy pattern throughout the image. And by itself, it's kind of useless. If I, if I just change this to overlay, it looks like crap, right? And we don't want to use that. So I'm going to, I'm going to run another filter on this, though. We're going to go Filter, Stylize, Emboss. And now we can kind of play around with the height and the, and the amount uh, and get kind of a stone texture, right? It's kind of a rough, a rough stone texture here. And you can play around with the lighting direction. You can see that each time you do this, you're going to get slightly different kind of an effect. So now I have a stone kind of texture. If I uh, apply this in overlay mode, well, now I have kind of a different looking texture. It looks like she's sort of like imaged onto a piece of stone. Uh, now, we don't necessarily have to use this over the whole image because it's in a separate layer. We can always mask it off. So if I add a layer mask here and I can mask it off of parts of the image. So I'm going to change the foreground color to black here use a paintbrush and painting into this white layer mask I can remove the stone texture from from her so that it's only applied on the background Pretty cool. So hopefully this is giving you some ideas here. There's a lot of things you can use this for. And I would just be careful to paint it off of all areas of the figure that I don't want that texture to apply over. You get the idea, right? Just finish this off here, and you know I could do a better job than this uh, if I wanted. But now I've got, you know, like it's a different, it's a different image. She's on a, she's against this sort of tone, stone texture. And that's a different image than what we started off with. And again, because it's in a separate layer, all we have to do is change the opacity and we get a more subtle effect. So it doesn't have to be quite so strong. Uh, but you can see we can do a lot of things to make the image more interesting using texture and the noise. So that's it. I hope you like that technique. I have lots of other free tutorials on my website, which is at veris.com. And I update a blog with other tutorials and techniques and uh, just my adventures in photography on uh, www.blog.veris.com. So do check it out, and I will see you there uh, next time. Thank you very much.